You have a client who needs to lose, let's say, 30 pounds of weight. You have or two scenarios. One client you take is going to, uh, you know, ramp, ramp up the car. They do everything they possibly can to lose. They get to the end of the month and they've lost 15 pounds. Right. But a good portion of that's muscle, so they've actually gone up a couple percent in body fat. Then you have the other scenario where the end of the month is, and they've gone up five pounds, but they've it dropped- It was pure them, muscle, though. But they, exactly, pure muscle. They've dropped the body fat percentage by 1%. Who's in a better situation? One of them is supposedly a half halfway to their original goal of 30 pounds, losing 50 pounds, but their body fat percentage has gone up, slowed their metabolism yes. down. Client B has actually gained five pounds, and body fat percentage is down 1%, and in a faster metabolism. like. Client B is in such a better situation, better. Yeah. even though they're actually five pounds further from their original goal when they came and hired you. That is really hard yeah. for the average client to like and wrap you, their brain and, around. And you follow them down, yeah. the, uh, you know, a little bit of a distance in time, and the faster metabolism, per then the fat melts off. Yes. Now your body becomes automatic. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Look, there's more to this. Getting lighter on the scale, body fat percentage going up, or your body weight goes up and you actually get leaner. We're going to get into that in just a second. But before we do, I'm going to give away a free program. We're going to give away Maps Aesthetic. Here's how you can win that. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If you do all those things and we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to that program. One more thing. We have four days left for our April sale. It's Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, Maps Anywhere, $99, 99 cents for all three. That's a discount from $361. So if you're interested, go to mapsapril.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, here's something crazy. You can lose weight and your body fat percentage can go up. That's right. I'm so glad that you brought this tip up. I've been waiting for us to talk about this again because did you see um, I got roasted on TikTok? For this one, what? Yeah, did, yeah. Oh, so, did you okay, get the so, wrong numbers? Maybe. Well, yeah. So I just I did quick math and I was off, yeah. right? So I was, it, the point still stands yes. true, right? That I was trying to convey, but of course, you know, leave it to social media. To I mean, I got mm. just tore apart. That's why they try and like the, like you make a good point. Like, like, you listen you to this up. idiot. He yeah. can't even do math. <laughs> yeah, you, you spelled this wrong. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, it was. It was so. The point that I was making was that you know I gave an example of somebody um, you know losing ten pounds. And six of it being muscle and four of it being fat. Uh, so 10 off the scale. But those, that rate, I said that the person's body fat percentage go up. Technically, that's not true. I should have used a more of an exaggerated. It depends on the body weight. And all that well, stuff. yeah, it depends on the, unless the person was like 400 pounds, that would yeah. be the case, right? So if, so a better example would have been a, a more extreme example to get my point across, which would have been like, okay, you know, your client can lose 20 pounds on the scale, right? Their goal is fat loss. They lose 20 pounds. And they go and get tested and their body fat percentage could go up. And yeah. what happens? Well, what happened is that the ratio of muscle was that the, they lost the ratio of weight that they lost was more muscle than it was body yeah. or so that was fat. To put it more plainly, I like to break it down like this. It's really easy, right? If you weigh 200 pounds and you have 20 pounds of body fat on your body, that means you have 10% body fat, right? So it's 20 pounds out of 200 is 10%. Now, if a 100 pound man has 20 pounds of body fat, that's 20% body fat. So you could lose a bunch of weight on the scale and even lose some body fat. But if the percentage, if your body fat percentage can go up because your body fat, your body fat total becomes a larger percentage of your overall body weight. In other words, if you lose a bunch of muscle, maybe a little bit of body fat on the scale, you can become a smaller but higher body fat percentage version of yourself. You can actually go backwards and body fat percentage is what matters because, yeah. you know, I weigh over 200 pounds. What makes me lean would not make a 100 pound person lean. That would make them actually overweight, right? So this is important to understand because we, we look at our size and we look at the scale and this is how we tend to judge our, uh, how effective our routine is. And we go, oh my God, I lost 30 pounds. I must be doing a great job. And by the way, people have experienced this where- that's they super frustrating for clients. Oh, you lose weight and then you go get body fat tested. I remember yeah. this happened to a client early days as a trainer before I really understood kind of how to really train well. And they lost a bunch of weight on the scale. And we tested their body fat. And I remember I tested it like three times and I could tell the client was like, something's what's wrong. wrong. Yeah, what's yeah. wrong? What's wrong? And I remember thinking like, am I doing something wrong? And I was questioning myself and I'm like, well, your body fat percentage, uh, went up a half percent. She's like, but I lost, I don't remember what it was. I lost 12 pounds. Yeah. So then I, what I did is I wrote down lean body mass, fat mass. And I said, oh, I said, okay, you, you, you're, because you lost muscle, your total body fat pounds now is a greater percentage of your body weight. 
And obviously what we did didn't work. And that was really oh, hard. I remember to say. angry clients about this because they're putting in really hard work uh, typically. So you're, you're adding your workouts that you're normally doing, but you're also now adding an excess of cardiovascular work on top of that and then reducing your, your calories. So you're in the state of just, you know, hyper stress and you're getting to that point where hard work has to equate to uh, muscle for some reason for a lot of people. That's yeah. like the thought process behind it when in fact you're reducing the amount of muscle in your body, you're recomposing, your, your body is mainly now, uh, the majority of it moved to, to fat or just stayed, your, your fat just stayed the, the same amount that it was, but now it makes up the majority of your body versus uh, muscle. Yeah. The shitty part is this is more common in the people that work really hard. Yeah. yeah, that's part of what got them there is yeah. the, the the mindset of, you know, more work equates to better results. No. And it, that's not how it works. No, like, the, your body is trying to become more efficient and it's also trying to adapt to stress. And if the stress is if the stress overwhelms the body's ability to adapt, then what your body's worried about is healing and also dealing with a stressful environment and more muscle equates to more uh, faster metabolism and faster metabolism for most of human history was not really advantageous when you're under a lot of stress. For the most part, lots of stress meant you didn't have a lot of food. Yeah. So your body changes its composition. I mean, if you were to look at a picture of a 200 pound man at 10%, a 200 pound man at 15%, and a 200 pound man at 20% body fat, all the same weight, they would look radically different. You can do this for women too, 15, you know, 15, 20, 25%, or 20, 25, 30%, right? Same body weight. They look very, very different. So we need to get away from the scale so much and mm -hmm. rather look at composition. It's not the scale that matters. It's what your body is made up of. And I use this example all the time. You know, you could cut your leg off and lose 20 pounds, but is that the kind of weight that you want to lose? Yeah. And I mean, your body is doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It's very effectively trying to conserve energy that it needs. Mm -hmm. You're telling your body there's all this crazy amounts of stress and demand uh, so we need to make sure that whatever you are intaking, we can save that for, you know, the future because it, uh, obviously it's scarce. Well, yeah. this is another example of, you know, why we get kind of labeled as these anti-cardio guys, which we totally are not. But majority of clients that would, would hire you would be looking to speed up their metabolism and lose body fat. Yeah. That's most clients that hire you. That's, that's their goals. And taking that person and training them three to five days a week and doing cardio every single day is not advantageous. No. And, it, and it's, and this is exactly what happens to that person is they are burning so much. They're doing cardio. They're sending a signal, to their body to be more efficient with calories. So the metabolism slows down. And even if the scale comes down 15, 20 pounds and they think they're going in the right direction, they're really not. So even though they lost a little bit of fat, maybe they feel a little better because they, they look smaller or they're fitting in and they have better fitness they have more stamina sure right more sure. endurance sure and that's why it can be i think that's why it can be alluring or of or confusing for people is because they're like why well, I, I definitely feel better i can yes. run down the block better than i could before and i'm definitely fitting in uh, my belt loop has gone down but the problem is you're losing muscle just as fast and we're technically not fitter and you're definitely slowing the metabolism I've, down yeah. that's the biggest trap i've found is is the whole conditioning side of it because what people associate with being in shape a lot of times means like they have like cardiovascularly like conditioned fitness yeah. you know, on top of that, which, you know, I get that, that, but that's a completely different pursuit and adaptation versus like trying to build muscle or uh, reduce body fat. Yeah, well, that's been is. the messaging since we were kids. Yeah. I mean, the mile run when you're a kid, like yeah. that's how we measure doctor's recommendation, run through, you know, 30 minutes. It's a week, great pursuit. Minutes. It's just different. Your body aims at getting better at what you do a lot of. And if you challenge your body or, or stress your body, which is exercise is a stress, your body aims to get better at it. Well, if I do lots and lots of cardio and simultaneously cut my calories, the signal that I'm sending to my body is I need stamina. I need a lot of stamina. I don't need a lot of strength. Okay. Cardiovascular activity requires very little strength. Um, and we're burning lots of calories with activity. Okay. Simultaneously, we're taking in fewer calories. So how do how does the body adapt in that in that scenario? It pairs muscle down and becomes a more efficient calorie burning machine. Or, or, or in other words, it just utilizes less calories. By the way, there's more to this. When your body pairs muscle down, it doesn't just pair muscle down. It has to organize its systems in a way to do so. And in one of the main ways it does this is by organizing the hormones in a way to pair muscle down. So think about this for a second. You have a man who's abu just abusing cardio, cutting his calories, his body wants to pair muscle down. 
What hormone is responsible for building or preserving muscle, right? Testosterone. Yeah, testosterone. What your body will do is lower testosterone in order to make that happen. Now, on the flip side, if the signal I'm sending is I need strength and I'm fueling this strength, I'm fueling my body, so there's really no, no need to worry about so much about being efficient with calories. Yeah, food's not scarce. My body is like, okay, let's build muscle and let's build strength and let's organize our hormones in a way to do so. Raise testosterone, right? And women balance estrogen and progesterone, right? Uh, get better growth hormone levels. So you can lose weight and go up in body fat percentage. And this is so frustrating. It's so frustrating, in fact, that when I would show people this, like they did this to themselves, they would deny it to the point where they thought that I was lying. I actually yeah. had a lady once do this with me. I tested her. She came to me. She wasn't a client. I did one of those free body fat testing booths. And she's like, oh, I got tested. Uh, four months ago, but since then I've lost 20 pounds. Yeah. So I, oh, I can't wait to see what it's at. And I tested her and it was a little higher than what she had before. She was so mad. I tested her again. So mad. She left, went somewhere else, got tested again, and obviously didn't get the answer she wanted. And then she yeah. came back and she's like, I don't understand what just happened. I've actually seen trainers uh, deny it and say that the, oh, yeah, the machine must be flawed. This is totally inaccurate. <laughs> and then they just like throw out all the science. And they're just like, you know, that can't be the case. Uh, you know, just stick with what you're doing. I, I actually think that's half of why this fitness space clowns on those uh, tools so much yeah. because I think a lot of them are pissed off because they, oh, if you're they, they don't trainer, understand the science. You look like yes. a stupid trainer, right? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it happened to all my trainers. I, you know, Justin was there uh, at that time. This was back when we worked together and I used to do these competitions with my trainers where I'd put a bunch of, I think we'd all put like a hundred bucks and then I'd match it. And it was like, you know, winner of the, the, the greatest body fat percentage change. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think I had 20 something trainers at that time working for me. And I'd say more than half of them had this thing because most of them are already pretty fit and so the mistake that they all made was to go okay we have you know two or three months to get even more shredded so they all just ramped up everything cut calories yeah, yeah. and it was like you know even though they we lost weight and, yeah but yeah everyone didn't. came down and a lot of them felt like they looked better because they got smaller yeah. And so, and they all thought the dunk was inaccurate, which is really accurate, right? So we yeah, did the hydro, we did a hydrostatic way, which is really like the 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 the, var the variance that it can be off is like t a tiny amount, like a half of a half a percent. Yeah, compared something. compared to the uh, you know skin caliper, yeah. especially electronic competing. So and so these trainers, oh, this thing is flawed. It's bullshit. It doesn't work. It's like no, dude, it's accurate. And I remember I knew that I knew how accurate it was, and it, I had the same thing. It happened to me, and I thought, whoa. Like, wow. What I'm, a tough pill to swallow. Oh, a oh, very, yeah. very tough pill to swallow, especially being, you know, supposedly experts in this field. Yeah. Obviously not that now, much. I used to speak like, oh, man, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't uh, blow out enough air. Yeah. You yeah. know, like I was keeping <laughs> too much air That's inside what they all me. Yeah. You know? okay, so were you, into, like, were you into the water? I was like, drowning, ah, you know, kidding. my second test. I'm just, <laughs> Farting, I out. remember yeah. my so they trainers were thinking this of that so I had to go and ask the guy who who had it Aaron that the, the guy who owned the um the setup and I said hey you know a lot of my trainers think this is way off like you know what if someone didn't you know what if they held their breath or did this and he's like listen Adam you could literally hold your breath intentionally because you're supposed to let your air out yeah. right he's like you could hold your breath intentionally and it won't throw this off by a half a percent yeah that's how how minimal of a difference yes it helps to blow it all the way out yes that'll make it even more accurate but he's like you couldn't throw this thing off if you tried yeah. Uh, yeah. more more than that. Now, so. on the other side of this, you could also gain weight and go down in body fat percentage. Yes. If you just gain, right mm. now, if you just gain 10 pounds of lean body mass and not a single pound of body fat, you're leaner. Yeah. Because now your body fat percentage, your body fat total, the total pounds of body fat on your body is now a smaller percentage of your overall body weight. Mm. And this is where it really, it hit me. I went on this kind of slight bulk, changed my workout, got stronger, got my body fat percentage back lower. And I remember being like, wait a minute, how is this possible? Yeah. And it was because I went from a cut to a bulk. Gained and muscle, gained replaced fat. That's right. Well, think about it. You have, a, you, you have a client who needs to lose, let's say, 30 pounds of weight. You have or two scenarios. One client you take is going to uh, you know, ramp, ramp up the car, do everything they possibly can to lose. They get to the end of the month. And they've lost 15 pounds, right. but a good portion of that's muscle. So they've actually gone up a couple percent in body fat. Then you have the other scenario where the end of the month is, and they've gone up five pounds, but they've it dropped was pure the, muscle. Though. But they exactly pure muscle. They've dropped the body fat percentage by one percent. Who's in a better situation? One of them is supposedly a half halfway to their original goal of 30 pounds, losing 50 pounds, but their body fat percentage has gone up, slowed their metabolism yes. down. Client B has actually gained five pounds, and body fat percentage is down one percent, and in a faster metabolism, like. 
Client B is in such a better situation, better. Yeah. even though they're actually five pounds further from their original goal when they came and hired you. That is really hard yeah. for the average client to like and wrap you, their brain and, around. And you follow them down, yep. the, uh, you know, a little bit of a distance in time, and the faster metabolism, per and then the fat melts off. Yes. Yeah. Now your body becomes automatic. For you. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's crazy. All right. So, speaking of workouts, I read this amazing article on cannabis use and working out. <laughs> So, you know, okay, so obviously uh, we are all old enough to remember when, you, you know, if you had a joint, you were like- Is this what out. they're throwing in pre-workouts now? No, <laughs> no. Oh my God. Just wait though. Once it becomes federal legalized, I'm sure. But I, I'm, we're old enough to remember when you, if you had a joint, man, you were afraid of the cops and it was like a big deal. And then, and then it became kind of medically legal and the stigmas changed. Now it's to the point, depending on where you live, I mean, we're here in California. If you smoke a cigarette on the street, you're going to get more people pissed off at you than if you smoke a joint. I mean, it's just the stigma has changed so much. Now, along with that is people using cannabis for many different reasons and being open about it. And one of them is using uh, cannabis to work out. Now, it, are, people, you, are you specifically just saying uh, working out in general, or are you talking in, about now strength training or cardio? All of it. Yeah, all of it. Training. Okay. okay. All training. So I was. I have different views on both of those. Yeah. Right. No, and this is this is going to speak right to that, right? Okay. So we get asked this question quite a bit. Like, I like to have a joint before I work out. Or I like to have an edible before I work out. You know, what do you guys think? Is it good? Is it bad? Or whatever. Now the studies done on can there's a, there's a, there's good studies done on cannabis or cannabinoids, I should say, and exercise. And cannab cannabinoid use and exercise, the studies are pretty clear. It reduces coordination, it reduces reaction time, and it reduces uh, power output. Okay, so it's clear. Like every study shows this, and it's pretty consistent. And so the answer typically is like, no, it's not a performance enhancer. However, the surveys that they're doing now, they're doing lots of surveys, and they're finding more and more people like to use cannabis before they work out. Why are all these people using cannabis before they work out if it reduces coordination, reaction time, and power? So then they ask them, "Is do you like to use cannabis because it improves your strength and physical performance? No. Do you like to use cannabis before you work out because it makes you enjoy the workout and for the psychological effects? Yes. Mm, yep. That's the reason why people are using it. And what they also found in the study is that cannabis pre-workout users work out longer and tend to do more work in the gym or um, on the run, interesting. just less intense than people who don't more volume. Well, probably right. I mean, I could see that. Like, I, I mean, I would. I like it on like a mobility day. I love it right? for mobility. Yeah. And and I like because you get lost in it. Say, or if I was doing cardio for a long period of time, you know. Yeah. So if I was getting on a stairmaster for an hour, you know, taking a couple of hits before I go in there or something like that, or taking an edible half hour hour before, because then I just get lost in my thoughts. I'm not thinking about the stairmaster and being in that mm -hmm. same spot for an hour. I'm thinking about work and thinking about all kinds of other things like that, and you get totally lost in your head. So I could see those those benefits. Yeah, a majority. I'm reading it right now. A majority of them were psychological and mental effects. That just the feeling uh, people work out longer. So this made me think about something for a second. Now I'm not going to advocate using uh, cannabis to work out. I think it's not necessarily a good association. So like, and I say think because I don't have enough experience around this. It's not, it wasn't a big deal when we were training clients, but I think it might create a bit of a dysfunctional relationship or exercise where someone might feel like they need to have it in order to work out. Yeah. And and the only where I'm pulling from is caffeine because I know that caffeine tends to be connected to exercise. And I know how I, if I start to use a lot of caffeine before my workouts, I can get to the point where I don't want to work out if I don't have caffeine. So I'm, right. I'm talking purely from that perspective. Dependency. Yeah. Yes. But nonetheless, if it improves the psychological and mental effects, I could see how perhaps cannabis use could be, could help. This is me just theorizing here could be beneficial for like mind to muscle connection type workouts, right? Yeah. Where I'm going to the gym and the goal is not to go heavy. The goal is just to concentrate and squeeze and feel Get the a muscle good pump and just kind of, yeah. Like yes. Add some volume less. To, I, I just, I can't see it at all for intensity. No. Like it just anything where I'm really having to no. like summon force and grind my way through exercises or put demanding amount of weight on my back. <laughs> like that sounds no awful. Way. Yeah. But it's, it's, everything else, like I made, I, I could see angles there. Yeah. yeah you know, I, I can't help but think of one of the first times that I ever got really high. Uh, and not intentionally this high. And I had to eventually drive home. And uh, <laughs> I remember 
driving home and I th- it was like a 10 minute drive home and it felt like it was an hour. I remember at the stoplight, I was so paranoid. My truck was going to roll through the, so both feet were on the brake. And so I just can't imagine trying to lift weights and just having that same paranoia. going through. I'm sure it's going to crush me. You know? I'm sure oh, there's oh a dose God. dependent, right? But yeah, for sure. I, I could That's see, why I wouldn't recommend it. You know? Yeah. So. I, it's so anti the kind of energy I like to work out with. I like to be super focused, super like, uh, feel like I can con- like, you know, summon strength and that kind of stuff. So I, I mean, definitely wouldn't be for me. However, I could see, I mean, with this many people responding to the survey and saying that like, Hmm, very interesting. Here's what I'm, this, this is, this is something that I may try, right? I have not used uh, the hemp oil from Ned pre-workout. Um, I have used it a little bit with caffeine because it's a wonderful combination, but if you use a big dose of the hemp oil, it's not like an edible, but you do feel some of the effects of kind mm-hmm. of that, like uh, that euphoria kind of. Yeah, feeling. you're not gonna get high from that. No, not high like a joint, but uh, and I, I wouldn't want to. Like, I wouldn't want to be like that anyway. I'm wondering if if using cannabinoids like w- that are found in Ned, maybe in the non psychoactive ones, just enough to give you that euphoric kind of calm feeling, mm-hmm. if that can help with the connection. Um, by the way, I've gotten emails from people who say that they love using it pre workout, and they say, and I always tell them, well, it's not a pre workout supplement. But I still so maybe right maybe especially well, I, I, in that I, it depends on the focus and the phase yeah, you're in and yes. that kind of stuff. I would think it'd be a more appropriate for some versus the other. I will say this: the hemp oil with caffeine though is a wonderful. Oh, I it's mean, a good way to taper it. Yeah. It is a very very good. I've never done that pre workout, but I do that for like if I'm writing a blog or an article. Yeah, great combination. I mean, so. I, if you think about it, if you have a like a high stress job and you're anxious a lot and you're getting ready to go to the gym, I I, I don't think that it's always the if you're high high stress and then you go in and then stress the body even more yeah. training like mm-hmm. and that's a great way to help maybe transition like okay I need to calm down it's like an relax. hour before yeah I yeah. take it that relaxes me a little and then I read reframe the way my workout needs to look and yeah, say, okay, exactly. I'm going to yeah. do more of a form and technique. Totally. So I could, I could get yeah, behind cause, that. Yeah, because I mean, you know, again, the reason why this is such a big deal for me with the article is, you know, we always think about the physical with, with workouts, but we know that the mental is, if not as important, it's more important. Sure. Oh, yeah. So, the intent going in is huge. Yeah. So if it, like you just gave a great example, Adam, if somebody used hemp oil and it helped them get in a better mental state, even if they lose some you know, max power or whatever, right. who cares? Which like is that. they shouldn't be lifting yeah. that way if they yeah. got a crazy stressful it, day, right? Very good point. Yeah. So very, very good I point. got an article sent to me and this is kind of along the lines of like uh, substances that have mind altering effects. Um, and uh, there was a, I think this is in Ohio. I don't remember exactly where this was, but it was a kindergarten class. And uh, this kindergarten student had brought for snack time to the entire class had basically grabbed their mother's uh, oh, margarita no. mix of the Jose Cuervo. <laughs> <laughs> It was passing it around. <laughs> what? The kids were drinking this. Kindergarten? Yes. He's, he claimed she drank four to five sips. These parents puzzled, understandable. Their daughters given Jose Cuervo margaritas they thought was juiced by a fellow kindergartner Thursday at Grand River Academy in Livonia at snack time. It's, it's like they didn't know any tequila. Better. Yeah. Like, now it's alcohol free, right? The margaritas? No, there's 10%. Oh, or oh there is. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah. So there's definitely <laughs> tequila in there. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I just, I was trying to picture this, right? Like, like kindergarten, they're little, little kids, you know, like yeah. they're like, yay, snack time. And they're drinking, uh, you know, this like start, margarita tequila. Start dancing on the tables. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sleeping. It went immediately to nap time. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right after that. Speaking of nap time, and the I, we Katrina and I are tripping out right now. We are on week two of Max at his new school, and uh, never ever has this kid ever slept for two hours. In fact, his daytime nap is always one of the because sometimes he naps, sometimes he doesn't. Um, if he does nap, a lot of times it's because we're driving somewhere or because we decide to drive him or Katrina pushes him in the stroller. Rarely ever, rarely, rarely ever does Max just lay down at noon or one and go take an, mm-hmm. an hour nap. It's just he's consistently been. By this the way, way, I take back all the naps I didn't want to take when I was a kid. What an idiot I was. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> now I'm like, what was <laughs> Missed opportunities, yeah, man. Anyway, continue. So he's now at this new school and uh, he absolutely loved it. Which is, he's loving it right now, which has been great. We're excited. And they, so they, they, part of when you enroll, like you get this, they have this app that I, they send you updates. So pictures of him and what he's doing and stuff. So it's really cool. Um, and every day that he's been there so far, he's, he just goes in with all the other kids and they, they have a nap time 
And I, I, I don't know if it's because there's other kids doing it or what, mm -hmm. but he goes and he lays right down and she sends his pictures of my son napping and he's sleeping for two, two and a half hours. Whoa. I'm like, what the, where has this been? When Katrina and I can't get a two hour break. He's in been the punking you guys. That's Dude. why. <laughs> and it's, it, it's not like it was an anomaly, like one or yeah. two times. It's happening every single There's day. There's got to be like a group mind to that. Cause it, like, I've seen that before no, in those little classes. No, it's trippy. Well, I, I, I have the answer. I know what it is. Exactly. What? I know what it is. Justin, I guarantee this happens to you. How many times have your kids gone over other people's houses? And they're and good stuff? for them. Or yeah. And they're like, yeah. you have the most well behaved, oh, yeah, yeah, polite. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah, my yeah. kids? Yeah. It's it's because they're somewhere else. So that's what so some some yeah. of the parents that have, that we've talked to about it. That's what sure. they speculate. Yes. They go like, yeah, it's just you know the kids just seem to be better kids for other it's people so than true. yourself or whatever. Like every that. time, yeah. my my mom used to get that all the time. We'd go somewhere, you know, we're all those four kids, and we're you know kind of yeah. wild or whatever. And we'd go somewhere. My grandma, someone would watch us or whatever. Your kids are so polite, and they clean up, and they do this. And my mom's like, hey, what kids were you watching? My kids? but that's how you want it. Yeah. I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, it's like, I know it sucks. Like when you get like the other side to the, I'm with you on that. Coin, I'd rather, I'd rather the, have them see. The yeah. I'd story. rather have to deal with the he's shitty, good the boy, shitty but, side of my kid. He's you know being what a saying? good kid. That's what and he's doing. Exactly. And yeah, then he's the on his best like behavior. Yeah, lay down. And so he's like, okay. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I'm just tripping out. I'm like, I can't Dude. get this guy to take a nap in the middle of the day like that at all. And it just reminds me of Billy Madison where they're all like, you know, sleeping and then they're eating paste. You remember that scene? Oh yeah. It was great. You know what you should do? So I used to do this to my daughter uh when she was little i noticed the same thing like man she sat in class was very and the teacher's like your daughter is so good she's so that i'm like really so then what i would do at home is when she would do something i'd be like i'm gonna call mrs so-and-so it's like i tell her i'm gonna tell her teacher no i'm sorry i'll clean up I'm like oh that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be good for that's what teacher. i do with elf in the shelf dude that's all it was he's like this this little like security monitor you know basically like it, He's gonna tell Santa yeah. all these things he did wrong. And then, so we've got this new phase, right? And this has just been going now for I don't know. It's been about maybe a month, three three weeks to a month. It's been going on. Um, and when he goes to bed now, he likes he loves to do this. If you guys ever come to my house and you play with him, you'll see he he loves to hide under the covers. That's like his thing. Hide, hide, hide. He'll oh, come right. run over to you and he'll want to get on the bean bag and get on the and he just thinks it's the coolest thing to get under there, like a tent or whatever. So he now does this uh, every night when we after we put him down, he sits up, he gets his blankets and he and he makes himself into like this tent and he and he tucks the sheets under his forearm and his head. And so we have to go in there after he's been asleep for about a half hour and untuck it all of it or he's drenched in sweat. Oh, wow. And he'll do <laughs> it. Like he does it. Oh, every, I remember the first couple nights it happened. Uh, Katrina and I'm like, what did he pee the bed? Why is he soaking wet? No, it's because he's he's getting you himself. You got him a little fort over oh, his bed. He's that, got he's got all he's got yeah. a TP. He's got the fort stuff. Oh, that's and, right. You got the TP. But he's that. doing it now when he gets in the bed and the sheets. It's the weirdest thing. I'm. I have is no it idea. a security thing? He do, it's he's like more playful. It doesn't seem scary. Oh really? Yeah. It's not like a. He just likes being covered, dude. Yeah, like that's cute. Yeah. yeah, and he never did it before. Well, yeah, but it's a pain in the ass because one, he he grips it. And oh, and so you're afraid to wake so, him up. So oh, I have to wake him up. So I go in every night right now, and I gotta <laughs> peel it out of his hands, and he wakes up, and then I gotta settle you're him all back cutting down. Holes. In I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we tried different. Like we were like, you know, I told Katrina, I'm like, just let him sleep uh, in everything but just a diaper and just a sheet, so that it doesn't make. Because he was doing it with the comforter. And it was getting, oh, yeah. I mean, oh, wow. he was just sweating within a half hour. It was weird. I've That's never, funny. I've never seen a kid do it. It's like his new thing that he's doing and it's kind of funny and it's like, but annoying at the same yeah. time because he's drenched in yeah, sweat. Yeah, my, my son, Aurelia, he does two things. One is he started hugging his teddy bear, which is so cute. Like, you know, he lays in bed and I, and we have the monitor on him. So, and by, by the way, I feel kind of weird watching my kid with a monitor all the time because I'm like, you know, I know he's a baby. It's because we didn't have it. You, I didn't you have, have it, the right? eye in the sky. He has yeah. no private time, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, he's got this little, you know, teddy bear. But then he does this thing where when he soothes himself, he'll, he'll on his mattress, he'll like bang his head. Dun, dun, dun. Like he's soothing himself. And I'm like, is he going to hurt himself? Like, yeah. What's going on over yeah, here, dude? Yeah. You, you know? Max used to gnaw on his bed frame. So his, just to soothe himself. Yeah, he he like chew on it. So like his like all the his wow. his bed frame is got like it's all all gnarly and stuff like that because he was just chewing on it. All well, time. I never uh, used to sing uh, ACDC songs. No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, because all the lullaby stuff uh, he used to play. Uh, uh, da, da. Just, swear to God, like, I swear to God, bro, you win. <laughs> I, but I right but now. I didn't have a camera. I like would hear it. 
I wish we didn't even have a nanny camera like that. You literally just, won the whole yeah. thing right now. What a great day. Well, I a, programmed that. I mean, it, that's pretty new, right? I mean, yeah. they didn't have it for my sister and no. brother when they were growing up. It was all, it was still this, the sound monitor. Yeah. The camera thing is really, but yeah, boy, talk, those things are so cool. I mean, I'm with you, Sal. Like, and I always tease Katrina because she was like, she could not separate herself from that for the first at least yeah. year and a half, almost two years. And I'm always like, we'll hear him. You know, he'll he'll eventually come out. Just he'll be fine. He'll be fine. I just feel like it's we're invading their privacy a little bit, even oh. though they're babies. You know? But it's you. bro, it's I mean, it's so nice. Like what age you, do? It gives you peace of mind though? It does give you yeah, peace of mind. Of I feel like we can totally be doing something else. I mean, I'll even go a walk on the neighborhood because I got it, and it'll send a bro. Alert they have he moves. Th- it'll tell you yeah, the temperature cool. in the room. There's yeah. ones you can see they're breathing. I would have used it like crazy. How sure. okay? So what age is it appropriate to take the camera out of the room? I think once he's at an age, like we're really close to that. I think once he's at an 16. age where he, he's 16. <laughs> Bro, I don't, you want, you want hell a camera no, in your 14 year old yeah, sunroom? Hell no. Dude. Hell no. no, you Even, don't. I don't want to see what's going on, boy. Oh, I'll be in denial. Love humanity. <laughs> be in denial about all that stuff. No, I, I, so I think that, cause we've talked about this, cause I think we're coming up on that age soon. I think once, uh, like three or four or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Once he's at an age where he goes down to bed on his own and he say, he's say, like, he's still at an age where he could hurt himself or do something sure. stupid. And like, you know, we barely got to that phase where, you know, she feels completely safe with him just kind of going to bed and getting up on his own. So we're close to that. I think, I, I think we would get rid of it pretty uh-huh. soon here. At least I will be advocating for us to get rid of it. Yeah. We'll see how she, she has the attachment <laughs> to it. more. I know, than I. He's a teenager, you know? Hey, oh, I know. Son. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, we re- we just recently broke the habit of not having it while while we're having sex. I told you that we had that for I mean the first. Oh, almost that's a that's a that is a two, two yeah, years. That is a cock block. killer. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is yeah. the worst dude. for her. Not a big deal for me. It's a big deal. I, I, I think, can't look at my son. Dude, at the same I, time. how many times you got in trouble for turning the sound off? Oh yeah. I do oh. it all the time. Oh, oh, I'm not alone. No, yes. every time. Okay, yeah. I'll be like, I'll, I'll, I'll get the monitor. You know, she's yeah. so mad at me. When no, because you that can't. Out. You hear the baby, and the, you know what are you gonna do? No. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, I, I, I feel like Aurelius has a. He's got like a, a like a sensor. He knows, like, oh, oh, oh dad, you know? <laughs> oh, okay, all right, <laughs> you get the kid creaking those walls too yeah. much. But he, he's not. He's not very effective because I got an announcement. <laughs> Oh, I was wondering if you can bring this up. Yeah, we're having another one. Wow. We're having another da, one da, da, coming. Da, da. Minivan's not too far away, huh? Bro, that's going to make number, <laughs> that's going to be four. He dude. needs a bus, dude. What are you talking yeah. about? That's going to be number four. Do you get any discounts on things now, like for having that many, like uh, uh, dinners nothing. and like movie theaters and things like that? Nothing. They but there's, there's, trick, definitely there's some tricks you like could play, though. Denny's school uh, No, there's tricks you could play, though. We could go to a buffet restaurant, get yeah. one plate. Everybody else just, you know, eat off of it. You could, uh, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. What's great, though, you know, maybe the same strategy my parents parents have that you can you can implore Cut is uh, you, you know that you've got enough to like pretty much you don't need maids or anything now you, can, you guys can just do all the house chores you get assign everything yeah. so you don't have to do anything around the That's house pretty it, soon man. here it's true a couple it's more true. years no it's it's i i was pumped jessica so we weren't this was unplanned but it, we, it would have been planned a little later but when she told me i felt this like just overwhelming joy i love big families i really do i really enjoy big families i enjoy the chaos of it, believe it or not, it's a lot. Yes, it's a lot of work and a lot of stress, but it's a wonderful feeling, you know, to have all that. And yeah. I've seen now my older kids with the baby, and it's just the best thing. I see my daughter playing with the baby and my son, you know, helping out and having a good time. Now we're gonna have another one, and it's a girl, by the way. We, well, you we come from a massive family, I do, so. and we and we found out it's a girl. So I'm gonna have. A little girl, which you know, you guys know how my daughter. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl for you. Yeah, huh? dude. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm so excited. Are you gonna have to move again? Probably. You are, huh? Yeah, because I didn't even think about. We that. don't have enough bedrooms for. Uh, they would have to share a room for a second, um, but because it's two, a boy and a girl, I mean, they can't share. So that's a room. why we've been looking at Utah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make for sense. All the Tim people, Duggers. all the kids are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, gotcha. it's I, I, probably in a couple of years I'll have to move, which sucks. I really like my place. I love my neighborhood, but you know that part sucks. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, dude, it's 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 super super exciting. But you guys, as you guys know, I haven't shared on the podcast. We haven't told anybody but jessica's had like the nausea from hell for oh, yeah. n- the worst brutal. Brutal. the worst i feel so bad for her. like it's starting to get better but for like six weeks she was literally vomiting all day oh, like sucks. from morning till night just feeling like dog shit and i have to and then you know and we'll sit there and i'll be like we'll play this game where she's she because she has to eat or she'll get she's, nauseous yeah. but everything makes her want to throw up so i'll sit there and i'll be like uh what about if i make you this and she'll be like oh no. And I'll be like, okay, what about this? So we'll go do this thing. And then she's like, don't say any more food. And she'll sit there and she's got the bucket trying to stay calm or whatever. And then the most random 
she'll sit and think, right? She goes through the Rolodex in her head, like, what food is not going to make me throw up? And then she'll say <laughs> yeah. something like- Chicken fingers no, from Burger King. <laughs> bro, it's, it's weirder than that. She'll look up and she'll go, a chalupa. I'm like, a what? <laughs> chalupa? A chalupa? Yeah. I'm like, from Taco Bell? <laughs> when did you like, have that? Like when she was 16? Yeah. Last night? <laughs> She's like, I have no idea. It's the only thing I can think about. It doesn't make me want to throw up. I'm like, all right. <laughs> the Cool chalupa. Ranch Dorito one, okay? Yeah, okay. dude. I'm like, we'll get you a chalupa. Whoa, I, dude, I don't know if they even make those. Yeah. I mean, I imagine that has to be one of the hardest things for uh, a woman, that, especially like Jessica, who I know is uh, very aware of she's also feeding her baby, so she wants to give her baby the best nutrients, but then she's in a position where nothing that is Dude, probably e best for the baby is it's either, good. It's either go get an IV and get well, that's what I'm calories. So it's like yeah. at, that, at that point, you have to make... And th I mean, there's a hierarchy. We talk about this in fitness all the time. There always is. It's like, yes, those things are important, but uh, calories first are, yes. are more important. Yes. And so you've got to make a decision. Now, how is she done with wrestling? Because I imagine... That probably fucks with her a little bit. That it she's, does, but she's so bad and so nauseous that she's like that what? she can't just to feel better. Is once she feels the better, first she'll, trimester, right? And this is the first. changes supposed hopefully. to hopefully please <laughs> supposed to. I have a cousin who was yeah. like this all nine months. No, way. God forbid, man. If that happens, Katrina so, figured oh, out for her, lady. and of course, I know it's different for every pregnancy, but for her, her pregnancy, um, she had to. In fact, she got to a point where she would set an alarm to wake her up at four in the morning. She had to stay ahead of it. Yes. If she yes. Uh, if she allowed herself to get hungry, she was fucked. She was then sick, throwing up, whatever. Nothing sounded good. If she disciplined herself to get up, and it normally would be she'd get up and have like saltine crackers and oranges or something. It'd be weird shit. Yeah. But she just needed to get something in her system really, really early. And a lot she'd go back to bed. She'd get up, go go downstairs, go do it, and then go right back right, right back upstairs. And uh, and she felt like she could stay ahead of it. And the times that she missed, it was oh. felt terrible. It's fu and it's funny too because my my son, you know, my 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 baby boy is, was he eighteen months now, and um, so he he gets scared. He sees mom throw up, and he's like, huh, huh. And I'm like, she's okay, she's okay. And he'll go over and he'll try and like rub her back, which makes her throw up more because if you touch her when she's sick, she's gonna vomit more. So now because he's seen it so many times, if we have the bucket out and we have like a plastic bag in it, he walks up to it and he goes, what? <laughs> he, like he pretends like <laughs> and so I laugh you're laughing Jessica don't think it's very funny oh, like, oh, oh Aurelius what does mama do he walks over to it oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there was one she sent me a video I texted her this was like because it's starting to get better okay so thank god but last a week ago it was really bad and I'm like hey honey how are you doing right now and all she does is she sends me a picture and Aurelius has this like terrified like Poor kid, scared look on his face, and he's running with the bucket. And she's like, he, he brought the bucket to me. <laughs> so she Aww. started like, and she's like, give me the bucket. And he's like, ah, and he's running to give Aww. it to her. That's poor cute. Uh, poor That's kid. Cute. Anyway, so uh, did you guys see the video? This, this is kind of crazy, but also a sign of the times. There was a video of these two women stealing $2,000 worth of meat from the grocery uh. store. Two thousand dollars worth of meat. So four packages of hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Two steaks. <laughs> yeah, is that all it takes I, now? I seriously, though, what, what inflation's hitting the food. fourteen to twenty percent is red meat. Fourteen wow. to twenty percent increase wow. in price is, is wow. red meat. Because I saw a recent one too about like some crazy cheese heist. Like I don't know if this was like across. Of course, I got every single person in the planet, like DM me that, you know, just, it was like some crazy, like $50,000 worth of cheese that they stole. But yeah, meat, of course, I'm sure well, that's even more expensive. Yeah. David Friedberg on the all in podcast with, he predicted, he predicted this, uh, when the, the war started, he said, there's, there's going to be things that we're going to see later on with the food supply. Oh, chain. in 10 months, it's going to be nasty. Yeah. There's, he's saying the next nine to 18 months is going to be yep. worse than what it is right now because there's- Well, what they're projecting. So what they do is, one yeah, thing that he crazy. talks about is they look at the amount of crops that have been planted now, which then they will you know get the food from you know 10 months or a year from now, right? Mm -hmm. So the total, and I'm, I might be getting the numbers wrong, but the total amount of acreage for corn, I believe was 94 million acres. That's normal. They only planted, I believe, 88 or 89 million acres. So that's a big difference. Mm. And what that means is now there's going to be less available corn on the market, a significant amount, which means the price of it is going to go up along with the fact that inflation is also contributing because of the, the, the money supply. So he's like, it's going to go through the roof. Same thing with wheat production and other staple crops. Mm. Um, now, here's the big issue. In, in rich countries, we're just going to see prices go up. In other countries, developing nations, they're going to have straight up food shortages because it's a world market. So what will happen is China, America, Canada, Europe will buy up 
the supply yeah. and then country and then places like Somalia, Ethiopia, you know, other countries, they're going to end up with none. Mm. Uh, and, and he explained that we have like a 90 day amount of food supply in America. Yeah. On 25% average. of our food we have stored. And he was saying that uh, China has a year, 150% a year and a half. Uh, you have a year and a half of stored food, whereas America is only about Which 90 days. Which is also predicted that that's wow. going to give them all kinds of leverage and power. in the next Yeah. Cause year. then what they'll do is they'll be able to sell that food or use it as leverage to yep. increase influence or increase their influence around Great. the world. Great. But it's weird. Yeah. So, so it's a sign of the times. I feel like we're going to start seeing more and more. Things like people stealing gas and stealing food. How much is, is Butcher weird. Box going up? Do you know if Butcher Box is? Uh, I know they had to increase the rate. I think everybody and, and had to barely well, though. They it didn't. Did, it didn't go very much. No, no, not at all. In fact, I have it written down here. Let me. I can. While I can, you're looking, you know what I just ordered. Speaking of Butcher Box, was uh, and I think I heard Doug looking to do it. Is the I can't wait to try them. Um, the burnt brisket ends. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that what oh, they're called? Burnt ends. Burnt ends. Is it yeah, burnt, I ends? Love burnt ends? I love burnt ends too. I didn't know they had them, and yeah. the, it was an add-on. We we ordered it yeah, the last those time. Are delicious. So. so I'll give you an example, right? So I get a, a one of their custom classic kind of big boxes, right? So it's one hundred and sixty nine dollars. I have it written down here. Here's what I get in this. And by the way, this is all grass fed, well sourced, high quality. So this isn't your conventional. Yeah. Corn fed meat. So it's more expensive anyway, but here's what I get, right? So $169, I get one, two, three, three one and a quarter pound tri tips, all grass fed. I get two one and three quarters, so 1.75 pounds of flank steak, so two of those. And I get four eight ounce pork chops. This is heritage pork, all for $169. Dang. But but you can go in and change, you know, uh, what you want in that box or yeah, whatever. You can customize it. Do you have yours, Doug? Because I know yours is different than mine. Yeah, so I always get the ribs. Uh, so I got one rack of my favorite, ribs, two, 2.3 pounds, I believe. Uh, the flat iron steaks are one of my favorite. Uh, they're great, especially if you do stir fries. They're super tender. Mm. Do they do them also seasoned? Because I think I have some that are already seasoned flat iron. There's something else. I never get the them seasoned, ones. but oh. I ended up getting two orders of that. So I'm getting uh, eight six ounce of steaks of those. Mm. Um, I'm getting ground beef. I like having ground beef, ground pork. Yeah. And uh, same price, 169. 169, yeah. yeah. And it's delivered to your door and it's yeah. high quality. Mm -hmm. And I think because of the their sourcing and because they eliminate middlemen, their prices are going to become even more attractive than they were before. So it's mm -hmm. actually an interesting time for a company like ButcherBox, right? You yeah. know, um, speaking of inflation, I, I read a, a stat the other day and I'm going to get the exact number off, but you'll get the gist. I was blown away by this. Um, the amount of money that's been pulled out of, of, of people's homes in America. Oh yes, I did heard you, this. Did you see this? Yes, was is almost in the last year a half a trillion dollars. Yeah, so it was like four hundred and like I think it was like four hundred and sixty billion dollars equity out. Yes, because and spent it. Yes, so I spent it. Yeah, so, so half a trillion. Of, pff, into so the think economy. of that. Okay, of all that we've already printed and where that's gone, right? And and, and that why that's part of the reason why inflation. And then you add in the fact that you got all these people. And then think about it. If you had. $400,000. I mean, all you had to have was had owned your home five years prior to yeah. this. And you're sitting on- You got an ATM machine right there. Yeah, yeah. you're sitting on hundreds of thousands of Especially dollars. interest in, rates are in, low. Uh, yes, in equity and interest rates are low. So how many people refied, pulled out 100, yeah, 200, 300,000 dollars? Yeah, or even 30, 40, 50 grand. This is part of what's wrong, or why we're challenged to with employment. And this is, why yes. People are, why, why work? I got 200K in the bank. I've never had 200K in the bank. Yeah, because it's weird because you look at inflation, things are more spent, but then you also have a shortage of workers and they yeah. think this is why, because people are just sitting on, Money and equity, and they're like, eh, I'm not going back to work. That makes sense, yeah. And I so, think about that. Interesting, right? Next crazy. Time. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you guys want to hear another cool study? Uh, uh, this one is this one is on amino acids and appetite suppression and movement. This one's really interesting. So check this out, right? So this is a study done on on mice, and what they did is they gave them they they took two groups of mice and they fed them both this what they would call a milkshake or a shake. One group they gave them like a sugar based one. <laughs> just, yeah. I'm picturing mice drinking milkshakes uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just what was that? What was that book? Uh, how to feed a mouse? What's the give a mouse a cookie? That's what yeah, I'm thinking yeah, of that give book. Give a mouse a cookie. Yeah, it doesn't book. go away. It, was, it like goes into this bear's house. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. Just like, oh, Sorry, dude. I just you said that. And I'm like, I can't help but picture like a couple of mice like sitting there. Yeah. Sitting there. Splinter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Justin's animal uh, <laughs> animal noises. sounds. We uh, give him the opportunity. You know, I can't help it. So good. So so they gave one. One group, uh, a no sugar-based shake, and the other group, a an, a non-essential amino acid-based one. So you guys, okay, so the difference between 
essential and a non-essential amino acid. So proteins are made up of amino acids. So if you took a protein, you broke it down, you would have all these amino acids. Some are considered essential because your body can't produce them itself. You have to get these from food, otherwise you'll die. Non-essential amino acids are amino acids my body can make itself. So it's not essential that I consume these amino acids because I can make them. Just like there's fatty acids that are essential and non-essential. Okay. So they gave them non-essential amino acids in these shakes. And here's what they found. The non-essential amino acids suppressed the mice appetite and encouraged movement. The mice moved more because of the consumption of the non-essential amino acids. Oh, man. You know, this This makes the case for these bodybuilders that walk around with the branched chain amino acids in their fucking milk jugs all day long no. sipping on it. <laughs> Actually, the opposite. Those are yeah. essential amino acids. So branched chain amino acids are essential, right? Oh, they give they get the, so the the non essential is, is the what, ones that did that this. actually suppress the appetite. Yes. Oh, interesting. So here's the theory, right? Yeah. What, it, what the theory was, and they were like, "Wow, this was very con consistent." They also located the parts of the brain of the mice that were being activated to do this, which is a primitive part of the brain that humans still have. So like, oh, this will definitely transfer to humans. This is because when we evolved, you know, for thousands of years, it was, and I wrote this down, it was advantageous for individuals to spend only a short amount of time at a food source that consisted primarily of non-essential amino acids. So imagine you're a cave person or prehistoric, you know, it's, it's thousands of years ago and you find some food and you're eating it and your body's getting mostly non-essential amino acids. Your body knows we don't need these. We got to get up and find essential amino acids. So it triggers movement and it makes you want to go out and find other sources. Interesting. Really interesting, right? Because you're not satisfied. You well, keep going out there. And find it's it. not even the hunger part. It's the movement part. Okay, that so what's out. okay? So what's your prediction in the what? supplement industry? What's to get created oh, to follow God. this? Come I, on, you, you know, you I, hate, know I hate that. You're right. You know yeah. it's coming. Yes, I know. I, I hate that. So it, some kind of weight loss attachment for to that. sure. It's so funny too. Not and they'll attach it to a study like this. We do mm. not need to supplement with amino acids. Uh, the only people that need to supplement with amino acids are probably vegans and people who just eat really low protein. Yeah, it just doesn't make burn that burn victims or something. Yeah. yeah, it just doesn't make that big of a difference. Yeah. But I found that very interesting. It encouraged movement in the mice, and they said, "Well, it's because if you're in nature, it is interesting." But I'm now more interested in what is to follow. Yeah, because that is like supplement companies love typical shit like for this. sure. For oh, yeah. sure. any angle that you can you could find that they can, you know, like make that into a product. It's, yeah. They're going to take it. Every time. Yeah. Look, life is too short to suffer from digestive problems. Uh, if you want freedom from your food, try digestive enzymes, masszymes from Bi Optimizers. This is actually a phenomenal product, especially if you had a high protein diet. It helps break down the amino acids, get them to your muscles and not have bloat or constipation. So you just take these with every meal. It makes a big difference. Go check them out. Go to mindpumppartners.com, click on buy optimizers, and use the code mindpump10 for 10% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, our first caller is Ben from Nebraska. Ben, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking my question. And uh, I really appreciate a lot of the information you guys put out, and it's kind of really helped me a long way. So, uh, my question is in regards to um, TRT treatment. Um, and how to properly diet and train for it, um, more on the diet side. Um, so I guess a little background for me is I'm six foot, uh, 235, 240, about 17% body fat. I'm 25 years old um, and kind of over, over the past years um, that I've been listening to you guys, I uh, started to really learn how to try and optimize my body, trying to figure out the ins and outs. And one of the things that I've really kind of picked up on was uh, testosterone. And you guys are pretty big advocates of uh, testing and checking your testosterone. So I went through a lot of those processes. Um, my first test was over, over a year ago. Um, it came up really low. And it was in the mid upper 300s and I was like, okay, so I, I need to do the right things to kind of put myself in a better situation. So I did those things, fixed my sleep, diet, training, all that stuff and kind of felt like uh, it was in a better, it should be in a better place. Tested it again, came back lower. It was in the 200s actually then. Um, and then that's when I went to seek help. I actually decided to go through um, the MP hormones and went with Dr. Todd and um, 
because I felt like that was kind of an outlet I could trust better um, and got all my blood tested and it came back a little better that time, but he, he sat down with me and kind of went through everything. And it was actually pretty nice because he went through things that I, my doctors never would have. Um, but kind of the bottom line is it, we, when we went through everything, we found out like I've just, when it comes to like diet and everything that I've been doing is just been doing perfectly. It's just, I have low testosterone and I just don't produce enough. So, um, started on, uh, got me set up with treatment and I started it on this Sunday, this last Sunday on the 17th, I believe. Um, and I, I kind of just more or less wanted to learn about like, or what, what what's kind of the best ways to like optimize, like the process of like starting testosterone. Cause I, so I really feel like, I feel like over the past years, I just struggled to lose body fat. I just couldn't, couldn't do anything to fight it off. And I feel like it, like understanding that, like, I don't produce enough testosterone. I felt like it's, it's more or less like I've been a plant that's just constantly being sprayed with like weed killer and just not growing, not, not thriving. And I finally got the opportunity to get a little fertilizer and get really growing. And I feel like this is going to be a really good, kickstart for me and my progress and I, I just really want to know what I should do diet wise mainly if because I'm trying I guess my goal is to shed down um, a lot more percentages on my body fat um, that's like the overall goal and just just for longevity um, so I'm kind of curious on where I should start when while starting TRT yeah good question and a very common one um, and this is uh TRT is actually quite common nowadays. Uh, uh, I've, I've said this on the show, but testosterone levels have been dropping in men pretty consistently decade after decade for like the last six decades. Uh, so not quite sure what's going on. Uh, we think there's multiple factors, but it's definitely an issue. And low testosterone in men is, uh, or even in women, but in men in particular, it's, it's quite devastating. It's a, it's, a, it's a hormone that is a driver. It, it produces dopamine, makes you feel motivated. Um, and of course, it contributes to muscle gain and then indirectly uh, to fat loss. But a lot of people wonder like, what do I change now that I'm on TRT? The, the same things that you do to in build muscle, burn body fat and be healthy when you're not on TRT is the same things that you would do when you're in tar TRT. Nothing changes. The advice remains the same. Now, the only thing that changes is that now your hormones are working for you and not against you. So what you'll, what you'll probably experience is better muscle gains, faster recovery, the fat loss because of the muscle gains starts to respond a little better. And, and usually what it looks like is this, and, and I'm going to go off of the studies. Okay. The studies show that men on testosterone, even if they don't work out, build muscle and burn body fat, but the fat loss is the secondary effect because of the build, the built muscle and the faster metabolism. So what you'll notice at first is more muscle and strength gains, but then as that kicks up your metabolism, then the fat loss starts to kick in. But nonetheless, all the stuff that you did before that was good and that works and that is based in science, good programming, good nutrition, is the same stuff you're going to apply today. And I, I do want to say I'm happy that you went through mphormones.com because one comment you made that I want to highlight for other people watching or listening is if you're not talking to an expert or somebody who's, who specifically works in this, you kind of get brushed off or they don't really ask you all the questions and they, they may have an old mentality where – you know, oh, you're, you know, even though you're with, you're within range, even though you're at the bottom, even though you have all these symptoms, we're not going to have you do anything because that's, that's wrong. We now know that optimum, optimal testosterone levels, all things being equal, improves health uh, across the board, heart health and prostate health and all and, the stuff that we thought is very it was individualized negative. too. Mm -hmm. it, very, it has to be, it has to be individualized. So, but keep all the stuff you did before that, that, you know, is good and works. Do the same thing. Here's a big mistake a lot of people do. They, they go on testosterone replacement therapy. Try and do more. They yeah, they, overtrain. Yeah, they think, oh, no, I'm going to double everything, and I'm going to ramp everything up because now I'm on testosterone. First of all, it's not like being on – it's not like a pro bodybuilder taking anabolic steroids. But even then, you have to train your body to build that kind of resilience and the, the, your, the ability to respond to high volume no matter what. It's not going to jump by itself. So you just do what you've been doing that works – and allow the your your optimal hormone levels now to work with you. And like I said, what you'll experience is 
you just started, so you're not going to notice much yet. But usually within, again, this is based off the literature, usually within four weeks or so, four to eight weeks, you'll notice an increase in libido, drive, then you'll start to increase, in, you know, notice increases in strength and muscle mass. And then as a result of the more muscle mass, then you'll start to see fat loss as the metabolism really starts to kick up. Now, one thing he asked, though, is if he should continue his cut or move into a bulk. I would, I would bulk right now. He just started TRT. His now, like to your point, his hormones are now working for him. I mean, what, what are your calories at, Ben? Do you know what your calories are at, Ben? Um, it, it's pretty close to like uh, I think maintenance is somewhere around twenty seven, twenty eight hundred. I was, I've been kind of playing with it, trying to figure it out. Okay. Um, it's kind of it's, it's really really hard for me to dial in. I, I weigh everything out, and it, it seems pretty hard for me to dial in. But I, I would say somewhere around twenty seven to twenty eight hundred is maintenance. So twenty seven to three thousand. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's, that's good advice then. Yeah, that's, I, 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 yeah. yeah. And it, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to put you in an aggressive bulk. I just want to make sure you're getting yourself adequate calories, especially since your know, testosterone levels are optimized. It's like thirty two hundred calories, thirty three hundred calories. Yeah, something at, like that. yeah. At the, okay. at the on the high end, right? So you, I think, I think as long as you're giving your body enough of what it needs, because you're gonna you're gonna have the, not, you're gonna be sending the muscle building signal uh, through lifting, and then your body now has the the hormones to get to work. Just want to make sure it's fed now. So make sure you hit your protein intake uh, and get adequate calories. And I would do that for a while and just see what happens. And I, again, when I say bulk, I don't, I wouldn't aggressively bulk. I just make sure you feed the body. If it's, if you feel hungry and stuff, that could be just because your, your metabolism's kicking up, your body's wanting to build muscle. So don't, I wouldn't want to deny that right now, right? Like you, even if you want to be leaner, I think you could actually increase your calories and potentially get leaner along the way because you'll build some muscle and it, it'll speed the metabolism up. Yeah. And, and just so that you know, I'm sure they already, I mean, you already know this, but the typically the process is you get assessed. They ask you also questions about your subjective state, how you feel, uh, plus blood test. Then they'll recommend a particular dose, but then you get a follow-up at about 90 days. And that's mm -hmm. because it could be very individual. So with increases in, in exogenous testosterone, meaning that you have to take it externally, you may know what some people will produce more estrogen as a result, which because testosterone can, you know, gets uh, aromatized to estrogen. Yes, it's been so they, and some people are no problem. Other people are very sensitive to that. So then they would have to look at controlling estrogen more or less. Some people feel better on a higher dose. Other people feel better on a lower dose. And I know some people watching right now are like, what do you mean? Everybody feels better on a higher dose. Not true. No. Not true. There's people that uh, that I've talked to say, you know I'm what? One of, I'm one of those people. Yeah. yeah. When I, when I, 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 even when I was competing and I was pushing the limits, like I had a threshold. Anything over, I started to get all kinds of negative effects. Like there's definitely a sweet spot for the amount of testosterone that I, I wanted to take to get the best results. Yeah. So they're going to, they're going to optimize it for you. It's going to take probably about three to six months, but in that process, you just do the stuff, you know, that works like good resistance training, good diet, you know, high protein, get good sleep. Don't think that you need to bump or change or go aggressive in any direction. Now that your testosterone levels are optimized because you'll offset it. It's not magic. You could have, crazy testosterone levels and be overtrained and have a bad diet and you're not going to get anything out of it. I mean, I knew, I knew people like this in the gym all the time that would take bodybuilder doses of anabolics and were like, why am I not gaining <laughs> anything? You just get like, puffy from the water. Yeah, and like, <laughs> your training's terrible and your diet's really terrible. So consider that as well. What's your program? You're following a MAPS program? Yeah, I'm on uh, currently on MAPS Strong. Uh, I'm at week three so phase one oh, good you're nice. you're you're doing great man it's it's, it's been it's been pretty fun I, i'm really i'm really really ready to get down to the lower sets though yeah the I lower can't... reps uh, I... the lower reps because uh the uh 15 to 20 reps is kind of killing me i mean <laughs> I, I just came out of um yeah, uh, split right before that so it was kind of oh yeah yeah. high reps to high reps again so. oh yeah strong strong is an interesting uh inversion of the phases in comparison to the other ones but well you'll, this will be cool it. when he hits two, phase two because you're almost done with with phase one right is that what i'm reading you're almost done with yeah phase. so i got i got half a week left oh and yeah I'll, and you just started to, this could be great i can't yeah. wait to hear how, how you feel literally like like, like like three to six months from now it's gonna you're gonna things are really gonna start moving for you because now your body's gonna work with you rather than you working against your body yeah, I really, I really did feel like I, like I was just fighting it, and like I get, if I really look back, I, I was just constantly going against, just going against my body, and yeah. it just, just kind of sucked. And Ben, I can't stress this enough: working with 
doctors that will continue to fine tune, work with you, ask the right questions, answer all of your questions, because it can be very different from person to person. Some men need HCG to feel, you know, normal in some ways. Other men don't. Some men need more anastrozole, which helps, re you know, reduce or, or stop the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. Then the dose can be too high or too low, depending on the person. Um, so this is all, and, and it's going to take a little while to kind of figure it out because you're taking it externally, you know? And so it, it could take as long as a year to really fine tune it. And you want to work with people that, that get it, not somebody that's like, all right, here you go. See you later. You know? And then you come to them, you're like, why, you know, why do I feel terrible? Why am I holding so much water or why am I whatever? So you're, you're definitely on the right track. And then map strong is a great program. And you know. use that, use that forum. I mean, that's why we pay to have them take care of that is so you guys have access to people that are far smarter than we are that are talking to you about hormones. So when it comes to anything related to that, um, they're going to be able to answer questions even better than we can. So take advantage of that they're in there twice a month answering live questions and then through the day, every day they're in there answering. So utilize that forum. Okay. Um, out of curiosity, how long do you think, like, if so, if you said I should go and maybe just a little bit of a bulk, how long do you think should I just, if I felt, uh, the problem, I guess for me is I always feel hungry. So it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to hit that. It, like, it's not, it's not hard for me to hit that calorie goal. I, you know, so, I'll give you, I'll give you two answers. I'll give you one that's more specific and one that's a little more general. The general one is bump it until you feel like, oh, I'm eating a lot. I think I'm eating a lot now and I want to reverse out of it. The second thing is I think a guy your size, you know, uh, and you're already eating 2,800 calories of maintenance. I mean, 4,000 calories is a pretty good target. I, I very rarely do I see somebody happy eating more than 4,000 calories. It's a lot to do on a daily basis. So with my clients, once they got to 4,000, I would, I would even try to cut them, uh, regardless. So th those, those two right there, but of course it's going to be based off how you feel. The, the key is going to be not, feeding yourself with trash right yeah, so good point i mean someone like you if you we were training together i'd actually kind of let you hey you're hungry let's eat but i would just say whole foods bro no don't when i say eat don't go oh i'm gonna go have some chips or throw some ice cream or throw some yeah. candy on there because i have extra calories to go and my coach is telling me to eat more i would say listen if you if you are hungry go get yourself some more steak and rice and veggies and just you know i just i would keep pushing that direction because with you following map strong your hormones optimized as long as we're getting adequate rest everything else is balanced out pretty well uh, that's your body telling it hey i, I want more calories because i want to build muscle so i would i'd want you to to feed yourself perfect yeah i feel yeah I, I've, a lot of i've spent a lot of time before i even decided to go the route of, of, of talking with uh, dr todd um I spent a lot of time just optimizing that little stuff like sleep and, and what, what I eat, because that's, that's, cause I mean, that's, that's, what's going to, if like, if I have a, if I don't have a real problem, that's the first thing to fix it. Yep. So hundred percent. Yep. No, you're working so with the right. I, this, that's why we work with them. That's the only place we pick. It's the one place we pick because of that. So you're in the right hands, man. Perfect. Thank you guys. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a lot of these now that dude, we, we were working with the I hormone you, clinic. I, I tell you what, dude, you look at the, the data on this, this is an epidemic yeah. and testosterone replacement, if it continues down this path, it's going to be the norm because it's it's going lower and lower and lower in he's, men and there's, con there's consequences. 25 years old. Yeah. Well, be, be honest. You know, and it's, it, again, he's not going to get that kind of advice or any kind of guidance from a, a regular doctor out there. Like they're not even going to address it because of his, his body fat percentage, like his, age. his weight, his age, like all these things are not going to indicate that there's any kind of underlying problem. And so, you know, this is one of those things. It's like, it's, it's great that now we have connections to somebody that actually has answers. For Listen, we, we've been saying it for a long time. We knew it was heading in this direction. I believe we are in the same kind of, era as the cannabis clubs were, you know, 15 years ago or 10, 10, 15 years ago. It's all getting de -stigmatized. Yeah. Things. There was a big stigma around it. Everybody was, it was sketch. And now it's like your aunt, it, your uncle. Like It's so interesting. Cause if you go to a general practitioner and you're a 13 year old girl and you have irregular periods, yeah, like give you estrogen, control. progesterone, birth control. If you right. have insulin issues, insulin, 100%. you have, you know, any other hormone issue, let's give you 
Testosterone medication. That's why. I think it's, it's that's why. That's exactly why I think it's just like marijuana. You go to yeah. the doctor and you tell them you you're anxious or you can't sleep at night or you have you know chronic pain. It's like here's this pill, here's this drug, yeah. here's this drug. Yeah. It's like okay, or maybe try a little yeah. bit of cannabis. See if that helps you. It's like which one is the lesser evil? Yeah. It's so and just like crazy. anything, it can be abused and also right, um, right, and also th yep. there can be reasons that are within your completely, and this is often completely within your control. Mm -hmm. As to why your testosterone's may be low, so it was great that he did that though, yeah. right? And that, this is why I'm I like. This with is that. one of my favorite things about mphormones.com is that those do those people will ask those questions and they'll be like, "Oh, you're not working out. You sleep five hours a night. You eat garbage. Yeah, let's look at that first before we look at." Especially at his age, they'll yes. always push that direction first yes. at his age. You know, a little bit yeah. different if they're 45, 50. It's it's yeah. you know more likely. Uh, but yeah, when you go on on hormone therapy to to normalize or optimize your hormones, don't change anything. Allow your body to dictate if something needs to be changed. And, and what'll happen is, yeah, sure, if you, you, you start to get stronger, you feel better, and then you say, okay, I, I, I think more volume is appropriate. But don't throw the volume at your body before it's ready because you'll negate any potential benefits that you could be getting. Our next caller is Brian from California. Brian, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, I just want to start off by saying, you know, thank you guys so much for everything you do uh, for the fitness community, and it's a real pleasure to be on your show with you guys. Thank you, man. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, so um, I sent in my question uh, was about like reconditioning uh, for going back into the military. Um, so just a little bit of background. I got out of the Marine Corps in uh, June of last year. Um, and, uh, you know, I got really big into like, I guess, bodybuilding style um, workouts. And, you know, just uh, being in the gym is a, a really big hobby. And I, I can't go a day without it, honestly. Um and recently I got with a coach, uh, to kind of help me get a physique that going that I really want to get. Um, you know, like, cause growing up, I was kind of the chubby kid and I didn't really have like the best looking body. And, you know, I really want to try to obtain that. And he's been helping me out a lot. He's been really good. Um, but you know, transitioning from that, going back into training to do stuff, uh, you know, for military training, like training for the PFT and the CFT. Um, I'm just a little confused on what I should do as far as like maintaining uh, a goal to reach a physique, but also training for performance at the same time. I'm I'm a little confused on what I should do, like um, how often I should train or like what I should incorporate exactly into my weight training. Yeah, well, it, we I need more more answers. I got some questions actually to help me give you better advice. Are, what are you? Are there tests or something that you need to pass for the Marines, or are you just looking for overall combat? fitness and readiness well so there are there are fitness tests that you have to pass on a they're actually a yearly qualification so the pft uh consists it's a physical fitness test it consists of a three mile run pull-ups and crunches okay um and there's also the cft which consists of a 800 meter run or more of a sprint um ammo can lifts and uh maneuver under fire which is kind of like an obstacle course that tries to simulate uh combat situations okay are you worried about not passing those or do you feel like you could pass them no problem no, I know for a fact I can pass them no problem. Um, you know, the where where my dilemma kind of is is incorporating uh, that type of training with weight training, trying to get a physique. If that makes sense. You, if you think you can pass no problem, you actually don't need to. Yeah, you're fine. Train yeah, that way that often. Too concerned. Maybe I would incorporate it biweekly. You know, just to yeah, make just twice to, a month. Just yeah, just to check back with yourself to make sure that you still got it. Um, right. but you could really shift most of your focus, you know, in the kind of bodybuilding direction since that's your primary goal, right? Like you're trying to build this aesthetic physique that you're looking for. And if you, as long as you feel like you've got what it takes to pretty much pass that test, I wouldn't worry too much about training a specific way to be great at that test. Like as long as you can pass that test, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing to change. If you could pass it, I would just, like Adam said, practice it a couple times a month. Just so you know, you got it, and, and just in case that's kind of like the canary in the coal mine, like uh oh, yeah. I didn't do the run well. well then you know you got to do more. Yeah, running. and then leading in to closer towards you know these tests, like you can always like do like a month out. Like this is where we try to peak up like conditioning uh, for getting into season for athletes. Like you can treat it like almost a season where you know if you can time it appropriately, uh, you adapt very quickly back to uh, endurance. So yeah. that's something that you can. You can sort of scheduled out so, you know, the majority of your time training can be focused around hypertrophy. Yeah. I mean, I really, honestly, twice a month, test them out. Or if you want to put it in your routine, I would do one of the tests once a week and then lift weights three or four days a week. 
I mean, if you're looking for a structured program that's going to give you all of that, um, MAPS performance would be the best because you're going to get the bodybuilding from it, but you're also going to get the athletic performance aspect in the program that should take care of uh, all that other stuff. So uh, are you following any MAPS programs? Um, I was following Split for a while. Um, I, I just finished doing it for like a second time because um, I kind of wanted to jump into, uh, like I said, I was transitioning back into getting ready for like the um, the testing. So I'm not really following a program right now. Yeah, let's do MAPS performance. I, I think you'll like it. Wait, I mean, how long do we have till you, when you go back? So uh, I signed my uh, most of my paperwork yesterday. Um, it just depends on how long it takes to get sent up to the CO and all that good stuff. So um, it could, he said he's looking one to three months until I'm uh, off again. Okay. okay. Now, will you know like a couple weeks or a month in advance when you're about to? Yeah. So uh, once I get the orders, uh, it, he said it'll take like one to three months to get the orders. And then after that, uh, it'll probably give me a time on the actual orders uh, when I have to report to my next duty station. Oh. Um, so the last time that, that I reported to a duty station, they gave me like two weeks. So I know for sure that that's like the least amount of time I'll have. And you'll get at least that when it comes, when you actually yeah, get the, so I, it sounds like you're going to have at least three months of training before you even have to potentially go in. Right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, in that case, I would actually run more like a maps aesthetic program and then transition the lot. Like Justin's saying what well, all yeah. I need to in two weeks time. Okay. You know why? Like, uh, uh, like sports teams, like all through high school, college, even professionals, they have like what they call hell week. And that week they they train crazy hardcore endurance, many times do double days. And the reason why that's been effective for so long is because of what Justin said is like your cardiovascular endurance, you can you can improve that like daily. It's not like building muscle, it's totally different. And so you can you can literally have a couple weeks before it's time to do that. And if you were kind of lagging on the running part or whatever because you've been training so focused on bodybuilding, you could ramp that up in the, the last two weeks, like literally by picking up runs every day. So, I mean, yeah. if, if if you really wanted to do the aesthetic thing, I mean, Sal's right, like performance, you're still going to build a good aesthetic body while also building some endurance in there That because that program's written for that. But aesthetic is heavily focused on sculpting. I mean, it's all about you know developing your body yeah. aesthetically. If, if you didn't, if you had trouble passing the test, our advice would be very different. That's right, yeah, for right? sure. Yeah, I, I know lots of guys that they, they bodybuild, but at the drop of a hat, they can be quite athletic and have decent stamina, and so it's not an issue. But then I know other people who train like bodybuilders, and you ask them to run down the block, <laughs> and they, they'll tear all their muscles. Yeah, down. and they can't do it. So, but the fact that you can pass those tests now and it's not an issue. You're not really in any emergency, you know, oh, got to change my my programming, you know, type of situation. So uh, I hope that helps you out. No, yeah, it definitely does. Because um, I was just getting a little stressed out, um, you know, with the programming because uh, I am so um, like I, I just like having like a schedule and like, you know yeah. what? I like knowing what I'm doing next. So I think that's why I was kind of getting a little worried and stressed out um, okay. about something like that. All right. Yeah. Well, which one do you want? Do you want aesthetic or performance? Um. Gee, I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah, you, I, you'll get both. I'll send both. To you. <laughs> oh, you, you took too long, so yeah. I'll give you both. Of them. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, that, hey, that yeah. was strategic. That pause right there. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it, it's a hard choice because I mean, they both sound awesome. But yeah. I mean, I'll take your guys' advice no matter what because I mean, like, I've been listening to you guys for for a real long time now, and you know, I, like I said, I really appreciate all the advice and all the um, you know, you guys have built me up as a person uh, oh, cool. a lot more than, than I used to be because I used to have a lot of like body image issues and yeah. you guys have really taken me out of that mindset and put me in, yeah, a, in a better well, that's thanks to you for serving us so yeah, yeah there you go brother that's you, our, you, our gift you yeah. go defend us and you put your life on the line for us so it's the least we could do appreciate it yep all right thank you guys so much again for everything thank no you Brian. all right man yeah it's uh overthinking yeah, yeah yeah you know overthinking a lot of people and i i, I mean i know i literally I, i'm sure you guys do too i know people that Train like bodybuilders, and if you tell them to go play some basketball and they can pick up, play a game, and they're, I mean, they're not like super basketball players, but they're fine. They're not going to die. And then I know, you know, people who lift, and you ask them to, <laughs> you ask them to, you know, to bend over and tie their shoes, and they pull a muscle. So, yeah, it's well, very different. Well, usually those guys like uh, didn't really have much athleticism. That's, yeah, a, that's a big so, genetic component, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, yeah it's if it's you weren't usually, athletic in the first place, and then you turn into a massive bodybuilder, the, trying to go do something it's athletic, be even worse. You're just right. a muscular, I think that, I think that has a lot to do with it, too. I mean, yeah. I used to Plus, talk, he's 22. Yeah. I, I, when I was 22, it was like I could just bounce from one thing. Now I'd have to train. Well, and, and what you said, I think, is the most important point, was because you said you could pass that test easily, we're 
we're not concerned about it. No. Mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, if you would have been like, oh, I'm a little worried or, you know, I failed it before be able to or, ramp it up or I'm barely it making to. it. It's like, pff, dude, you're going to be fine. Especially if, if you're training, like MAPS aesthetic, you get into phase three and you feel like you're doing cardio a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you, I mean, well, that's it, just your it. heart's racing. You know, yeah. Forget that. Just go do a set of, uh, of 25 reps in the barbell squat and yeah. tell me you don't feel like you're Yeah, you're gassed, so you you definitely build a little bit of stamina in phase three of aesthetic mm-hmm. so he could literally follow that. And then like, let's say he gets his papers and it's like, hey, two weeks, you got to report. That those last two weeks, hell if, week, here yeah, we go, yeah, yeah, go hit run, run, go, every- go do the exact test like two or three times, yeah, yeah, and then you you be there, man. So it's 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 incredible how fast you can uh, improve that. Our next caller is Phil from Florida. Phil, what's happening? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? What's good, up? good. All right, awesome. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. Been listening to you guys for a little over a year now, uh, and I can say. Uh, Thanks in large part to you guys. I'm in the best shape of my life at 42 years old. Hell, oh, boom. hell That's yes. That's right. So the uh, question I got for you guys is uh, I'm active duty Navy, and I'm getting ready to ship out uh, in a, about two months on a ship. Um, schedule right now will be about out about six months. Um, uh, right now I'm doing MAP Strong. I did anabolic before this, and I uh, feel good. I feel strong. Um, and so. Going on a ship, uh, equipment is going to be very subpar. Um, there'll be some dumbbells, maybe a couple machines. Um, from what I hear, there's a Smith machine. Um, so my question for you guys, uh, part one was, you know, um, your guys' thoughts on a training program. I was thinking about doing an old dumbbell workout, uh, maybe some isometrics. Um, so I wanted your guys' input on that, on what kind of a program I could put together so that I can, you know, Hopefully, continue to get stronger and stay in great shape. How long are we on the ship? How long are we on the ship for? Um, it's scheduled for six months right now. Okay. I I love um, I love the idea of doing suspension right here. I think with uh, you doing anabolic strong and bringing a suspension trainer with you would be yeah. a, a, a you know, great place. You to know, go. anabolic and strong have dumbbell only um, versions in the programs too. So I hadn't noticed that. Yeah. So when you go in the, when you log into the program, there's an option to where you could get all the, the alternative exercises that are all dumbbell based. We did at home blueprints basically for people limited. Yeah. But Adam's per, I mean, that's exactly what I would have said. Map suspension. You you bring a suspension trainer with you. You could hook up anywhere and man, that is a great program, especially if you've never trained like that before. Really, Uh really good, uh, you know, really good for fitness. Yeah. Um, Justin, do we, we, did we do the at home mod also for performance? Yeah. So I would love this uh, perfect world for me is I'd have you run through suspension first and then the back half of your trip, I'd have performance dumbbell modification run. Yeah. And so, then you, you had a, you had a question about nutrition too, I see. Yeah. So on the ship, um, right now I eat four times a day. I, I literally track all of my calories to make sure I get my protein and my calorie in. That's not going to be, uh, possible on the ship because i'm not you know cooking my own food um <clears throat> the biggest uh, uh concern for me is going to be getting in enough protein every day um literally the only time you can actually request how much food you want is breakfast uh for the rest of the day it's whatever they give you so i mean i was considering just bringing you know as much protein powder as i can carry with me to supplement with that yeah. Um, yeah. I so love that. That's the move. <laughs> you know why I like it? It's super easy to to take with you. You could store it. It doesn't need to be refrigerated. Super easy source of protein. This is more this is more protein powder has become so clutch. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, I would take uh I would take a lot of protein powder with you and use that to hit your targets. Um, you know, with breakfast, lunch, and dinner or or in between if you have access for sure. Right. Yeah, I mean I that's we'll be working, you know, I work on twelve hours, twelve hours, twelve on, twelve off. So There'll be a lot of time for me to just whip up protein shakes, so it wouldn't be an issue at all. Yeah, no, you'll be per- – what, what, what are you going to be doing on the ship? Uh, I'm an aircraft mechanic. Oh, cool. oh good deal. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm a little bit beyond that these days. I, I sit mostly desk job and tell people what to do. So Yeah, well, you're 42, right? So you've probably, <coughs> yeah. been, probably been doing this for a little while. You'll be, he- able to, you'll be able to work on our G6 once we convince uh, Doug to buy one for the <laughs> yeah, company, right? right? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I'll be for hire. For okay. Sure. Hey, good to hey, know. Good hey, to know. You're any, hired. Any secret spaceship aircraft that we have that we don't know about yet? <laughs> yeah. now's, now's your chance to tell us the truth about yeah. uh, our, our military. I'd be, yeah. I'd be way above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Look, we're going to send you uh, map suspension and map performance. So you have both. Oh, of them. hell yeah. Yep. And, hell you'll, yeah. and you'll be all set. And again, we appreciate 
what are you doing out there, man? So and Sal you. was actually hey. wrong about the strong having the at home. Yeah, thanks that's, for saying that's that. That's actually one of the programs we didn't have it on, but we do have it for okay. anabolic performance, anesthetic. They so, have a dumbbell only. So program. follow the suspension trainer program first. That's going to be great okay. for you when you get through and done to that. Move to Maps Performance and look for the at home mod inside there. So what Sal was explaining, that's actually in performance. Yeah, and then you can just use the dumbbells uh, for for that program. Hell yeah, that sounds great, guys. Cool. All right. Thanks, Phil. Right on, Phil. Hey, thank you, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, you, bro. Thank you. This is a perfect... People are always asking about supplements and stuff. Great example. And our advice yep. is always, you know, whole foods. This is a perfect example when protein powder is... Makes perfect sense. You have no other option. You yeah. Know, this is a great way to incorporate yeah, it. Yeah, and, and you're on a ship, so it's limited space. You, you know, you're not going to get fresh food sent to you all the time if you're in the ocean. Yeah. You take jugs of protein powder, that'll store for six months, no problem. Yeah, I'd even stock up on a bunch of different yeah, types bars of bars. And yeah, all kinds bars of and stuff. shakes to uh, have yeah. for snacks in between your, your meals that you can actually yeah. get. I can't 100%. imagine what that's like, huh? Working out, staying on a ship for six months. Uh, have you ever yeah. done a cruise before? I did, and I hated it. Yeah, it yeah. was all. It was all about the food. It was. I've like, been on a few, and, and yeah, the food's not the best. Yeah, stri- you know, oh, well, it's nice eat, if you eat, got time different time. places you can kind of dock and go check out. But uh, yeah, it gets old after a while. It's yeah. like a teaser, though. It's like you don't it get is. the day there, and you got to go or whatever. Like yeah. yeah, so yeah. It d- depends on the one. Yeah, but suspensions just it, that's so perfect. That's one of the best muscle building. Like I don't have space. I don't have a lot of equipment. You know, type workouts. You can add intensity to body weight training, which is great. Oh, yeah. it, it, you can make it as you can make it a hell of advanced, really or super hard easy, if you want. Yeah, depending on how on the angles. Our next caller is Brandon from Texas. Brandon, what's happening? So I'll just get straight to it. Uh, kind of might be a two, three-part question, but after listening to you guys now, a uh, new listener, I think I've kind of might just figured out how you might answer the first question, but long story short, a little bit of background here. Uh, Pre-COVID, I was a competitive weightlifter, uh, Olympic weightlifter, so snatch, clean, and jerk. Um, I considered myself pretty strong at the time, uh, snatching um, 320 plus pounds, clean drinking 400 plus pounds, you know, decent back squat, bench press, et cetera. Um, compete at the national level quite a bit. And then COVID happened. All the gyms in Texas shut down for a long period of time. Um, fitness is kind of my, um, kind of my cure for kind of uh, stress in, in, my, in my work job. So, I decided to pick up running since that was a ticket. That was really the only thing I could do during COVID. Had no access to a garage gym. Uh, all the gyms were shut down. Weightlifting, powerlifting, CrossFit gyms all across Texas. So I got into running. Uh, and one of the ways I kind of typically keep myself motivated is I always sign up for some sort of goal, whether it be a weightlifting competition, powerlifting, um, in this case, half marathon and marathons. So I spent two years of COVID um, running. Uh, trained for a full marathon, got COVID, got sick, and then reduced that to a half marathon. Um, and then recently I just did a, another half marathon trail running. My kind of two big questions. Um, one is all this running, I feel like has really kind of taken a bad, a bad turn in terms of my health, uh, at, at least not by the, a doctor saying health, but just how I feel in general. Um, I'm more achy. I'm, I'm a lot more tighter. Um, I would carry a lot more body fat, even though I was running, you know, 40, 50 miles a week. Um, based on some of the, the podcasts I've been listening to, I feel like my metabolism has absolutely crashed. Um, so that's kind of the first piece there. Uh, the second piece is kind of, you know, I, I really want to get back into strength training. Uh, you know, since gyms are back open in Texas, um, I'm really having a hard time taking that step forward, it, you know, kind of the mental side of it going from, you know, putting 400 pounds above my head to struggling to pick up, you know, 200 pounds off the ground uh, is pretty tough on the mental side of things, you know, starting where I came from. Uh, so kind of any advice there as well as how we could, you know, address that mental side of it, like preparing yourself for, what is considered a heavy workout now, even though at one time it was considered like warm up sets. Um, I think that's kind of the gist of the two questions, but that crash metabolism and just negative health effects from two years of running. And then how do you, how would you suggest kind of getting started again in the strength sports and really tighten up that mental side to get into lifting heavy things off the ground again? Yeah, no, it's a um, good question. And what you're experiencing is quite common. Um, and yeah, your metabolism did slow down. It, it became efficient. 
and good at running. So I'm sure you can run really well now. Uh, but pairing muscle down is, is kind of part of that process, especially when you go from being as strong as you were yeah. to what you're doing now. Uh, your body is it changed and adapted. That's totally normal. Now, what, is, what does this mean? Brandon, it means your body can adapt in the other way too, right? You can go back to what you did before. You just got to give it time. So when you get back into the gym, you know, just take your time. Go slow. Sl allow your body to adapt. And, and it's a snowball effect. And what you'll notice is it'll slow. At first, you're just going to kind of feel sore. And then the strength will kick in a little bit. And then it'll happen faster. And then it's kind of the snowball effect. And, you know, muscle memory, I'm sure you're familiar with that term. You've probably heard it before. It's well documented. It is well documented. If you take your time, you don't overtrain, you cut the running down or eliminate it and go back to the gym and slowly start the Olympic lifting again and give your body a chance to catch up, you'll be where you were before much faster than you will realize. So, but you got to be patient and give yourself an opportunity because, you know, what you don't want to do, here's the deal. Don't make perfect be the enemy of better, right? Yeah, it's not perfect right now because you haven't been doing it, but that doesn't mean what you're going to do is better. Is, isn't better. It's better, and then soon you'll get back to where you were before, and your body will adapt. It's it's an adaptation machine, so don't worry about that so much. That, that would be the best piece of advice I'd give you. Brandon, how old are you? I am 31 years old. Okay, so I, I just want to comment on your competitive mindset that you got to be careful of. So you're 31 right now. This is about when you're going to start to notice this shit. Matter of fact, this is probably your first example of this. Like approaching uh, your training always with this, I got to compete. I've got to have an event. I've got a PR. I've got a. You know, that's going to lead you down the wrong path, and you're going to run into more issues like this. Next comes injuries, metabolism slowing down. Uh, eventually, one day you will get weaker. Like we don't always just keep getting stronger. So, so chain, learning to change your relationship with training and exercise. It's less of a competition and it's more of a dance. Um, and if you don't start to figure that out now, your body will force you to figure it out as you get older. So um, and this is common. I had, I had lots of clients that they always felt like they needed to have this competition in order to motivate them to go to the gym. And, and it is, it's a, it's a mindset thing. You need to start, stop, stop looking at your, your exercise as like, there's this end goal that I'm trying to get. And it's a, it's a lifelong journey. And part of that is just reframing it. Like when you, when you train is actually paying more attention to how was my day today? Was I a better person? Was I, was I nicer to my partner? Did I, would, did I kick ass at work today? Did I sleep better? Like, do I feel better? You know, like start, start making the connections to your training, to your overall life. Mm -hmm. And how it enhances and improves that and less about how much weight is on the bar, how much closer you are to your marathon time. You, you, you've got to break. And, 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 but, and that doesn't mean we can't have a marathon. It doesn't mean we can't train for competition. But when you have a I can tell by the question that you this is you're this type of person. Um, Justin, I know, will yeah. have something to contribute because he's like this. I was a little bit like this, too. I have an athletic background and you know, you, you want to get out of that mindset or else you're, you're going to find yourself in this trap. It'll just look different next time. Well, that feeds perfectly into your, your question of how to get in that uh, mindset, a better mindset towards your strength training, even though you might not have the same weight uh, on there that you used to when you were competitive about your Olympic lifting. Um, you know, you, you really need to start looking at your long-term health, your holistic health, like how your body is improving overall from, uh, you know, multiple directions. Um, and, and getting in that place is a tough transition, especially when you're, you're in that competitive, disciplined, athletic mindset. Um, this took me a few years actually to, to really identify, uh, differently because you're so strongly identified with this uh, competitive go-getter and I, I want to I want to win something um, and so to, to, to just gradually work on that and really just um, appreciate the fact of what this is providing your body you know how much you can uh, improve your overall sleep your relationships your your energy levels like you can just start transitioning your focus elsewhere instead of winning something. So I'm going to advise you to do a different program than I think that the guys might. I think typically we would, we would recommend like a MAPS anabolic here because we're trying to, you know, rebuild the metabolism. That's one of the, one of the things that we talk about the program. That's so great about it, the way it's structured, but I actually, I would, I would rather, if you were my client, I'd actually rather see you do performance. 
And the reason why I'd want you to do performance is because of the mobility days and the emphasis on like the mechanics and the movement. And instead of us being competitive about how much stronger we're getting, I know we're going to be doing some unique exercises that maybe you don't traditionally do that are like in performance. And I would be in your ear constantly about the, the beauty of the movement and technique and that and and that's what we're we're being competitive with. If you want to be competitive? Mm -hmm. Let's be competitive with how how much better are you moving this week than you were last yeah. week? Yeah. You know how how much further range of motion do you have in your squat compared to the week before? And if you need if you need that competitive drive, just shift it in a different direction instead of always being these these feats that you have to pass with the weight or the time. Well, you probably noticed that in your Olympic lifts, right? Like you just sharpening the technique over and over and over and drilling it. What did that do in terms of once you started stacking weight? Right, exactly. Because, you know. Yeah, it's going to improve strength everything. strength kind of plateaus, and then the technique is what really makes you lift yeah. not really your strength. Well, Brandon, Brandon, today's your lucky day because I actually disagree with, with uh, the program recommendation. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I think mass performance would be great, but I, I'm going to recommend map symmetry because mm -hmm. I think having you do squats and presses is going to bring you back to what you used to be able to do, and map symmetry is going to be so different. You're going to have nothing to compare it to, oh, so I you're not going to you're not going to feel bad about anything. I mean, the first two weeks is isometrics. After that, it's all unilateral, and I'm assuming you never really did a lot of unilateral training, so you're not going to have a, anything to compare it to. It's all going to be new. So you're not going to lift, you know, do a unilateral exercise and be like, oh, I used to do a lot of weight. Like so I never really did this. all underlying, you know, uh, imbalance. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, it's just, it's so different psychologically. I'm not, a, I'm not against that. I think that's, I think that's great advice. Yeah. So I think that's, well, you, we're going to send you both. That's why I said you're lucky because yeah. we already recommended mass performance. So I'm not going to take that away from you, but I'm going to send you map symmetry too. You can choose whichever one you want to pick. I just think doing different resistance training exercises that you've never you've never really done before mm -hmm. you're not going to have anything to compare it to so you're not going to feel so bad about it right it's all new right so i've never done this before i don't know how strong i used to be but whatever i'm just gonna get better at this yeah i i mean that's the same advice in a, in a sense right that's the same thing yeah. that i'm looking for in mass performance with him is i know that there's gonna be movements that he's he probably yeah. doesn't traditionally do and, and the same advice though applies for me regardless if you're oh, yeah. doing performance or symmetry which is make it all about the movement the workout. Yeah. yeah you know get rid of the you know needing to increase the weight on the bar every week um for you get back into the love of the technique and movement and and let that be the driver let that be the thing that you're competitive about yeah no i appreciate it. that makes perfect sense i mean i get stuck in that mindset already the first thing i did was like okay i'm gonna jump on a five three one program to get my strength back to normal right yeah. But I'm always comparing myself to what I used to with, and that makes that makes perfect sense. Now, the, yeah, the cool part about what Sal recommended with symmetry is you actually get to do that at the end of the program. At the end, yep. So you know, you discipline yourself to do the things that we're talking about, and then the last phase of symmetry is like one of our favorite parts of that program it's is the reveal is the okay. Now let's let's give you a traditional five by five, and let's see how you express all those movements. So you'll get your opportunity to to go get put some weight on there, but first do these steps. Yeah, totally. All right. Awesome. All right. And one more thing, Brandon, you know, this comparing yourself to your previous lifts, I get that. And the advice that the guys are giving you, like really take it seriously because if you don't, you're going to have to anyway. Like at some point, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to be as strong as you used to be. At some point, if you're, look, some of us are blessed with old age mm. and at some point you're going to hit 40 and 50. And if I always compared myself to my best, I'm 43 now. And if I compare myself to my best lifts, you know, and I keep doing that, I'm going to hurt myself. It's not going to work anymore. So you have to change the mentality and it's better to do it now than it is when you're forced. As long as you're better than all your friends that are your age. Yeah. You know that's, I mean? that's the key that's right there. Yeah. yeah, that's look, what I'm competitive yeah look around at your friends. <laughs> yeah. They're all fat. That's, that's, not that's, not, that's not a difficult challenge. <laughs> <laughs> <We're good. laughs> all right, Brandon. Thanks for calling in, man. Awesome. Thanks, guys. You got it. I actually almost forget we have symmetry yeah. because we because it's, right? it's, it's so brand new. I mean, that, we're not uh, supposed to give away a brand new program, but, yeah, we yeah. but that's uh, I, you know I think that, broke the rule. Dude. I think that's great advice, and uh, again, too, that's not there's never that we're yeah. never answering. I just, I just know myself, and if I have a layoff, it messes with my head to do exercises that I traditionally do and I'm good at, and yeah. so I purposely will do stuff I never do because yeah. then I don't have a what frame a of reference. Program to bring yourself back, though. Oh you know, yeah, you know, like that's I, I was just thinking totally. about that. But I, I swear to God, man, I, I used to get clients like this all the time. Like in order for them to stay motivated, they had to sign up for a marathon. That's they had to that sign up will, for this. They had this to sign will up. be his Achilles heel. Totally, his Achilles heel will be if in. You know, it, and it's tough to get somebody out of, out of this mindset because it served them so well for most of their life. Yeah, because on the surface it doesn't look bad. Yeah, right. But it, 
it can turn into well, kind of I, this dysfunctional And I bet he's had a lot of wins in life by applying this mindset. Yes, um, yes. And that's why it took me a long time to get out of it. Who's going to tell me, like, this is how mm-hmm. I do it. You know, yeah. grind, get after it, compete with myself, compete with yeah. others. Like, that's always elevated me. But at one point, like, you're, you, that's why I asked his age. Uh, yeah. Sooner or later. It doesn't serve you anymore. Yeah, sooner or later it catches up. And there are always going to be somebody else that's stronger or faster than you. And if that is the way you look at your training all the time, you'll eventually break down and it's you either quit or just get hurt all the time. You got to switch the mindset and start to attach it. And what that looks like is ignoring the the things that you traditionally look at and focusing more on the things that most people actually don't think about from lifting. Like I said, your relationship, the way you communicate. I mean, I even noticed things that I've shared on the podcast that is so stupid. I'm a better husband at home when I work out because I I come home and because I lifted, I feel active and want to move. And so I go right into cleaning the house and supporting Katrina. So now when you work out, you know that. Yes, I do. And and I, and I recognize that, Oh wow. Cause there's been times when I'm feeling sluggish and not helping out around the house. And then what does that do? It causes friction between her and I, cause I'm not supporting her. And it's like, wow. So my workout isn't just about me getting stronger or looking better all the time. Sometimes it's also being about better partner. So learn to make the connections to all those things. I try to tell that to my wife. I'm like, if I don't work out, let me tell you how, However annoying I am now, <laughs> way worse. So you should be very happy that I work out every single day. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal, and they're all free, okay? You can also find us all on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can only find me on Twitter at Mind Pumps Out. 